We're going to start working on what information you have to put in there, and then everybody's going to put in the same info. So we're going to have consistency. So it's not going to be one component is in this half of this info, that's all they want, all they kind of need it. It's going to be across the board, what do we have to do? So we're going to start with FY19 IAAs by the end of this fiscal year, really kicking it off for October 1st. So we're going to, I've got a couple components that are going to be my guinea pigs to see how well this works and we can kind of figure out how long it takes to do these. And then, really starting October 1st, it's going to be a requirement for all of the 19 have to get in plus anything FY20, then you have to start adding 18 to get to the point where we actually kick off for sure the, the final G invoices start. So all of that information has to be in there anyway. Let's just go ahead and start using it, and then that will be the basis for the info that we need for our IFACs. Tomorrow. The G invoice. The class. The class. So, so tomorrow afternoon, uh, Valencia, I believe, is going to be teaching with Treasury a G invoicing class at what time? 12. Uh, mm -hmm. At 12 noon tomorrow. So everybody, please go talk and listen in on what they're going to be doing. So this is sort of our start to start touching it and seeing how that's going to work. The other thing is, I always hear problems on, I sent the email with the template to this component. They never responded, so I don't know what I needed to post. And I never got this, or that I could, you know, this emails back and forth. So one of the things that we're doing, and we'll be out later this, this month, this is May 1st now, um, we're, we're going to have a SharePoint site that no, really no more emails <coughs> and templates. We're going to have a site where you go in and you post the template in the site. And then the other component will automatically get an email to that email box saying your template has been posted. So it's going to hopefully get that info, but then there's going to be a posting into that SharePoint site for response to that template. And then we'll have a record of, here's what I sent, here's what I got. So we're also going to be able to see is, who sent them all to, you know, if I have eight components I need to send them to, did I send them to all eight, and did I get responses from all eight? So this will stop this, I think, the bigger pointing of, well, I sent an email and nobody ever responded. Well, now it's going to be kind of easy to see if you did or not. And then also making sure, and then you also can use it for if you do an update, you can make sure that that update is put in there too. So there's going to be, here's the original, here's the update, and also automatic notifications to the email boxes. And then depending on how you set up the email boxes, because you can set them up that when you do get an email, they go out to the other six people who have access to that box. So then they know too. So um, RMT is helping us with that um, SharePoint site right now. We're going to have it up hopefully by in the next couple of three weeks. And so I think that's going to take some of the, I take the finger pointing out, no more finger pointing. So I think that's going to help us a lot. And then we also really finalized, as a group, these, this time <coughs> period six for um, periods one and 13 have to be net zero due to those accruals. Period nine for what, eight and 16? The next one. Yeah. Eight and 16, um, starting period nine. Um, pairing 37, 47, we'll start period 10. And, and there are other pairings other than these three major pairings, and all of those have to be done by year end for period 12. Yeah, that includes the transfers. We know transfers sometimes get a, a little difficult, but transfer is just a doc, source document. And I noticed this period 6, we have some transfer that they will have little issues, but I'm, I'm, I'm expecting that for this point forward, transfer should be zero. Um, <coughs> So is the um, imputed costs. Imputed costs also sometimes have different that also should be zero. Those are easy. I think the more challenged one will be the AP, the AR, the advances, and the revenue and expenses. So that's why we, we put them on, on a different level so we can work individually with those parents. Yeah, so Treasury did start this requirement. It has to be zero as of the end of FY17. So now it will be two years to the end of this year. So mm -hmm. this is a requirement. Um, so we needed this, basically, if we work towards this, last year we almost got to, to zero. So we had a problem with putting component on the accruals. But I think we can actually get there. Um, it's going to take a little bit of time. And then we're going we're gonna to have several along the way that this is definitely doable. Um, and I think, and also as the component side, wouldn't it be easy if everything got, all your iPads got posted that month and you didn't have anything hanging out at the, at the end of the month? Think about it. Think how great that would be. Yeah. So, 
I'm doing great. Keep doing it. Hey, I got nine more years till the time. What happened before that? So. Okay, so next steps. We're going to continue, and we're not going to, you guys are going to say, well, you're going to continue to say the same thing? Yes, we have to communicate. Communication and collaboration among all of us is the key to achieve that zero balance. So we got to continue reconciling. When we receive that template, and we got tier done, we get to say, okay, I'm done with tier, let me go now and do this other. We got to continue to communicate, continue working together, doing this collaboration is very important. We got to improve the communication using the, using the share point. The SharePoint is going to help a lot because all the information is going to be visible, like Judy was saying, for those other groups that maybe should be part of this, and sometimes we laugh on telling them, hey, can you look at this, can you take a look at that? I don't have information. Okay, it's the SharePoint. And we all can go and look at it and make sure that we have the information we need. As G invoicing gets a little bit more mature and the functionality expands according to the schedule, because right now we're only <coughs> taking orders, right? Mm -hmm. So. Once we get past that, do you envision that the SharePoint is going to go away? I mean, will G invoicing, based on the information that you're getting right now, be robust enough to eliminate the need for driving things to that okay. SharePoint workflow? Not, not for a long time. Okay, I think, yeah. I think you're still going to have that need because I think you also need that confirmation. I, I mean, I think you can run, you'll be able to run reports out of the G invoicing that says, here we are, and, but the problem is you're not going to know what <coughs> is on the templates. So the templates really, this is what I'm showing on my books for this agreement, and then this is what we're showing, so what you'll see in the invoices, this is what I might have, but, and this is what I sort of the main balance of what is in my books. So there's going to be, I think we're still going to have that need, and then also that's how we're going to communicate if you do have differences. They go, oh no, I have an iPad, or I, have, I charge this app. <coughs> And so I think then you can have some kind of explanation. Why was this chargeback? I just see a chargeback. And sometimes those ex explanations are not right or the amount wrong. What do you mean the amount is wrong? You know, they don't say it should have been 90, we charged it 100. So I think we're still going to have that need for a while until everybody really gets used to it. But the idea of the SharePoint side is, like I said, we've got people that are dealing with the accounts receivable and accounts payable in this group. Well, I have then three other people in this group that are handling my basis. And then I've got these people over here that are handling this. So instead of trying to keep one person being the keeper of the data, the info is going to be there. So when it's time for me, if I'm dealing with advances, and I don't care what they do over there, that I can go download and see where we are in our advances. What do I need to look at? What's going on? One more question. Who's hosting SharePoint? I mean, so it's SharePoint. Okay. okay. And DOD will have access to it as well? Yeah, so if you're going to have component function access, mm -hmm. then you'll be able to get to it. Yeah. It's going to be a link on component connection. Everybody can see it. And I see SharePoint like a way of communication. That collaboration that we were talking about communication, that's why I can see it continue working, even though we're going to have G invoicing, because this is a chance where I can talk, TSA and CBP can talk and say, I don't agree, this is the balances, I don't have the agreement. I see it as a tool of, for communication. Building and we're talking about the share points. And then we implemented the use of components elimination mailbox, it will help. Because through, when you see share, something in SharePoint, you email and instead of thinking, okay, let me email that name, Emma, Munoz, that's too long in the name. If you email ESA elimination, ESA elimination at ESA.ESA.com, you're done. So you don't have to think about that, those names. So we continue using the, the elimination mailbox and we continue using the SharePoint. Hopefully, eventually, maybe when I retire, might not. But for now, I think we're going to keep using it for, for a little bit. She can't retire to I do the next nine years. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> so going into G invoicing doesn't when you go into production, you're, a big, you're open to all trading partners, not just the HF. Yeah, yes. Okay. Yes. 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 So, so, so what we're going to do is once we kind of get the, within DHS kind of set and settled in our process working, mm -hmm. we're going to start going out, we're going to start working with GSA. We're going to hopefully work with the Navy because Coast Guard has a lot of stuff with the Navy that have issues. And then any other I mean, agencies, and then we can start working with them to kind of say, hey, this is what we have. This is the email box that you can use when you send this information. So, it, so are you centrally going to deploy G invoicing for DHS? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. 
are you centrally going to deploy the invoicing for DHS? Yes, yeah, so for financial management, we are overarching managing G invoicing from a DHS black perspective. So we need to be consistent. So we gotta have how TSA invoices needs to be the same as Coast Guard needs to be the same as CDP. So we can't have everybody kind of doing everything. So that's one reason why as we're doing this, we need to have consistency, consistent processes. And then also with the, the JPMO, that's part of that too, that there's a standardized process for all this. Well, that's is kind of what I was getting at, is we don't really have a standardized process. Yeah. I'm a FEMA, so I'm in charge of doing this for well, FEMA. And yeah. we did the implementation, the draft implementation plan, and we submitted it to DHS, <laughs> but we haven't had a meeting since. Well, well, just kind of just starting to is that I think uh, if you go to the meeting tomorrow, I know. Uh, they'll, yeah. they'll let you know that we got it and as DHS go and send the treasury, this is DHS's plan. We're not quite there yet. Yeah, no, we're not we're in the problem in the progress. And this is going to be nice step. Yeah. And the presentation tomorrow is gonna be very good. It's a lot more detail with DHS. Yeah, I'm gonna get into much, but I was wondering if when you get plans, are you really gonna be you know, review them and mention them? That's what Valencia will talk about that yeah. tomorrow at yeah. noon. So we are we have to see the implementation plans. We have still have not received them from all of the HS components. But we're in the process of reviewing the implementation plans. And then once we sort of kind of get an idea and gauge what every component is with G invoicing, right now we're just trying to get everybody up to speed with G invoicing. Because some people have no knowledge, some people have some knowledge. So once we get everybody up to speed, people start um, identifying timelines and deadlines that components would have to adhere to. So right now we're just trying to gauge what every component is and then we will start giving out deadlines and standards that you guys can follow. I mean, we've got system issues that some of the components have to get to. Mm -hmm. You know, Coast Guard needs to do system. That'd be nice, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions, concerns? Let me go to the well, last. Just, yes. just more information. Is anybody actually using G invoicing yet for the available technology? So as for instance, have you got a population set of agreements that have actually been inputted into um, G invoicing yet? Even if it's just a few. No, so we can't do that until we get signed up yeah. with Treasury. There's all sorts of steps on that. I do have a couple components that already volunteers to solve components. But what if you have my guinea pig? I'm going to say my test component. Um, what is it going to take to put these in? So is this something that is going to be a 15 minute entry of an IAA or is it an hour? We don't know. So we're going to go kind of figure out and then we're going to see what, you know, but have both sides put information in and then kind of see. So how can we use this and, and some mm -hmm. of it until we can actually get in there and start using it? We don't know. Yeah. Another thing too, on the deadlines, just for your awareness, with the pilot that we set up on IPACs, it didn't yet involve G invoicing, but one thing that we learned is in dealing with the Navy, um, population is very hard to determine. You know, so I would ask, just on behalf of all of us, particularly if you've got those DOD trading partners, um, be mindful that your deadlines, we don't have full span of control over um, just because what we've learned, and this is all to their credit, because the Navy is fully embracing the need to pass their own audit, and they are very much trying to get a handle on what's their population. And uh, it's going to be hard, potentially, for us to meet those deadlines, because it's a partnership. So okay. just for what no, that's, that's worth. Good. That's good to know. Yeah, and we know that that's a problem now, because when mm -hmm. we talk about, do you have complaints on your IAA right. population? Again, another little audit firm, you know, all the different podcasts and questions. And I think, we're, I think there's some components, components that have some pretty good lists. I don't know if they're 100%, because nobody's going to say, oh, I have 100% confidence that this is my list. Because as we all know, there are people in programs <coughs> that go off and sign these agreements, and sometimes they let us know, or we get the IPAC from somebody, and we go, what the heck is this? And we find out that Joe in this office signed this agreement, and then, then you get a bunch of people involved. Not that that would ever happen that anybody no. would sign an agreement without proper authorization. I just want to make that clear. Okay. <laughs> so let me out. Go so that that ever happen. Uh, so, I want to remark here before, I know we only have three more minutes, this thing. This, we, all we talk here is basically on chapter 47, and that includes the reciprocal categories, 
and it talks about the intergovernmental. But this one, chapter 4000, is precisely regarding GE voicing. So for some of us that are not familiar with that, I would suggest to review this chapter 4000, intergovernmental transactions application, and it will give you a very good understanding of GE invoicing. I think it was updated last summer, right? It's just, it's new, yeah, yeah. it's, it's new. Just yeah. 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 And then of course, you go on and follow the CRG and the elimination working, working group group. Do we have any other questions? questions? So you said that the, the chart on commitments came from your elimination working group? Yeah. Yeah, from the workshop, that from last November workshop. So as a group, we had representatives from all 15 components in there. Yeah. And we, we talked through and then we brought up, this is what we would like to do going yeah. forward. And all 15 components agreed that they would do it. They would do it. So, well, so mm -hmm. can you go back to the, um, the other chart? The one before. So I noticed like the processing iPad commitment, the first through the 15th. So my team actually sends the iPads on the, on the service provider side, um, and I'm not aware of that requirement to send your iPad. So, so this is this is one reason why we put in the CRG because one of the things we found is we had everybody come to this meeting, but they did not share. As exciting as this stuff is, <laughs> <laughs> see, I like to talk about this stuff. Mm -hmm. So I mean, we're the we're the, we're the areas that actually do the work consultant. Exactly. Have, like, three resources to exactly. So this is one reason why Stacy yeah, this is one reason why Stacy brought this up with the CROs right. because it's going to take a commitment from your whole organization to ensure that you've got proper staffing to do this and that we want to get to these changes. And and so we're starting to that's why we're starting to get the information out that we're talking here today because I can go and talk to a lot of people. I, I'm dependent on people with components to go talk to the other people. Minutes of this workshop were sent out to all the managers, so whether they read them or not, or understood what the implications, I think sometimes they don't understand. They go, oh, that's a great idea, but they don't understand what does that really mean to the people who are processing. So this is our goal for this year. So we've got a little bit of time, and then also the shutdown and kind of delay us a little bit to get some of that info out. So we're going to be working And I think that, that is and important to figure do. out what, how we can actually do this to mention that maybe in the elimination working group that we need every like, like weekly, this work needs to be spread and maybe you need to start calling other groups, asking other groups to call, so they can all engage in all this commitment. I think it's important to by weekly because it's a forum to, to you to express any concern or any question that you might have. So, so we have to finish. we can do to address your, your, your issue is that we will pick one elimination working group and we have the every week. And it will be specifically on the ICAC and process. So we'll send out a notice and say, please ensure your staff and your component who does the ICAC is representing represented in this meeting. Because that's how we found out last week that there's an issue with FPS and the timing of when they get their information on when they can actually do this. So what we'll do is we'll set that up in the next month and we'll have one meeting strictly on this process, the first and fifteenth. What, what issues you have, and then we can help, we can work, kind of make sure everybody has their opportunity, and then we kind of, kind of get through that. Okay, hey, quick question. Was the first or 15th for just within the department or just, everything? Just within the department. Yeah. So we're not going to deal with the outside right now. Let's get our home all on the clean and set, and figure out how we can do it. And then we can go and say, hey, DHS has this process. It works great for us. We need you to set up and do things. So, and how we're going to get GSA to do that, I don't know, but, you know, a deal with one, one department at a time. Okay. Any other questions? I think we, they keep us. So, we're going to get that out.